Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay, and today we're going to be doing another little trash to treasure terrain project. And we're going to build ourselves some nice little towers out of pop cane. Alright, so today we're going to be building a building out of basically aluminum cans. So in one of our past videos I made a building out of some cardboard cans. It's kind of along the same lines, we're going to be doing kind of the same thing. And of course I want this piece to blend in with that piece and all the other pieces that I've made in the Trash to Treasure Terrain series. I've got here a tall Arizona can and a short uh, Canada Dry can. Basically I want this to be sort of a two-tier terrain piece, much like I did on the cardboard can uh, video. So, I've got my two cans here, that, that is what it is. But also I want to show you guys that I got here a nice foam core base. Now, in the stream I did a couple of weeks ago, weeks ago I actually used 3 8 plywood as the base. And I like to use plywood and masonite board and things like that as bases because they're less likely to warp. But for all of the trash terrain series, I've been trying to make these terrain pieces sort of as inexpensive as possible because that's kind of the point of that terrain series is that we want to be able to build terrain um, cheapest and easiest means basically. So that being said, foam core is an incredibly cheap material. It's incredibly easy to shape. As you can see here, I've already beveled the edges with my, uh, my knife and uh, that's just done with a sharp X-Acto blade. In fact, I'm sure you can see that I've torn up a bit of the foam around the outside and that actually means my blade's not sharp enough. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be building my buildings on. It is worth noting that I did wash these out thoroughly with water, guys. You don't want to build a terrain piece and then find out later that you got ants infesting your piece. That would just be brutal. <laughs> also, I've removed this silly tab off the top of it just to make sure that uh, you know it's not getting in my way anywhere. But if I were to put these cans down, so that's usually actually, why don't we go there? That's usually what I do when I'm thinking about building a terrain piece is I kind of, since I built all these foam core bases out of random scraps that I have lying around, I generally uh, don't build them to suit the terrain piece I'm making unless I'm doing something very specific. In this case, I'm kind of trying, hence trash to treasure, I'm kind of trying to use up the crappy little bits of stuff that I have lying around. So when I have a substantial piece of foam core left over, but not enough that it could like be an entire project's worth of foam core, I basically just cut random oval shapes and bevel the edges, and that way I have basically just a quick, easy template that I can grab at any time for uh, terrain piece and terrain pieces and terrain projects. So I, now that I've got it laid out, I want to actually take a good look at it and see what I kind of like how I want to arrange them what I want going on between them and I think I've actually decided I'm gonna do something very similar to the cardboard can tutorial that I did where I had sort of the two tall cylindrical buildings with like a bridge running between it now of course the tops of these cans are not flat they have these weird little crevices there's a hole in the top as well there's this weird lip that I don't really like and also I don't want them to look like cans when I'm done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to construct um, platforms that can go on the top of either can and then of course I'm going to run pipes and random other little things, maybe some rubble around the base uh, just to sort of dress it up a bit. So that being said, the first thing I want to do before I even start attaching these cans to the base of the terrain piece is I want to cut out my platforms because I'm going to have to use the shape of the can, right, in order to do that. Because I want it to be sort of parallel with, sorry, I'm not doing that on camera, sort of parallel with the um, sort of bulging part here, not the smaller part, because I don't want it to look like a tin can when I'm done. I want this thing to be as pretty as possible and not look like garbage. You want it to actually look like a building, right? So, that being said, I've got here a random piece of foam core, again, a nice substantial piece. I didn't think this one was quite big enough to cut into a terrain template, um, and especially a lot of the time I end up keeping these for things like bridges and platforms because it is skinny and long. Um, it'll work good for cutting individual strips out of it, which is exactly what I want to do. But first, I want to take a nice sharp pencil 
just your normal pencil and my can and I want to trace out a couple of circles the size that I want my platforms up top so in order to get the best results I find you have you have a tendency to either follow this inside circle or there's a tendency to go off the circle especially if you run the side of the pencil down you're actually gonna have it be slightly wider than the circle uh, and in this case that's actually what I want it to do because I want it to be slightly wider than the can so that when looking at it from above we're not going to see this weird little ridge that's around the top of the can so the easiest way to get a nice concentric circle is simply to run the pencil directly along the side of the can and try and keep it as close to that as you can now like I say I like to use pencils for drawing on, black, on foam core especially black foam core because if you use pen or you use marker or anything like that there tends to be you tend to not be able to see it whereas with the pencil it's kind of shiny and so you can see it at least in the light after you're done so I'm just going to do that nice and slow all the way around cool and same thing with the other can That actually turned out really well. I think those are pretty close to circular. And if they're a little bit off, so what? Because we are going to uh, add extra features to this battle to damage them up a little bit. So, you know, a couple little imperfections is not going to make the biggest difference. Now, unlike the terrain piece that I wanted to cut with beveled edges, I don't want to cut these with beveled edges. I actually want them to be as straight as possible. And so I'm going to try and look at it from sort of a bird's eye view and try and get my blade if you're looking at the blade, here I'll put it in front of the camera, if you're looking at the blade and you can see, you're looking directly down it and you can't see the sides of it, then you know you have it straight. If you can see the sides of it like that, then you ain't got it straight, you got it on an angle. So just take a bird's eye view, look straight down at it, and if it's a little bit off again, not the end of the world, but I want to make it as perpendicular with the table as I possibly can. Sometimes that's easier done just by stabbing down like this. Because sometimes when you're uh, running it through the piece of foam core, you'll find you'll start to veer off or you'll start to angle as you're as you're moving. So you just kind of want to stab straight down. So I'm at least going to get through the first layer of cardboard on the uh, outside of this. And then I'm going to run my knife. Because now that I've cut a good ditch in there, it, rather than veering off, my knife should have a much easier time following the circle I've already made. Because obviously path of less, least resistance is going to be the part that's already halfway cut, not the parts that aren't cut at all. And like I said, my knife is obviously pretty dull because I tore up the foam core a little bit, but that's okay. Not the end of the world again. This is a battlefield, so we're going to be adding, like I say, more details, more battle damage. We're going to make these things look really cool. So there's one circle. I'm going to cut out my other circle. Sweet. There's my big one and my little one, which is awesome. Just put that aside for now. Now, what I want to do with these, again, before I glue them on to the base, I actually want to glue these platforms that I've made for the tops of them now to the uh, tops of these cans. And I want to get them as centered as possible. So I actually find it's easiest to do that by laying down your circle. And then I've got, I've got my hot glue gun here. I should mention that. It's been heating up since before I started filming. 
and I'm really just going to run a bead of hot glue around the top rim. Well, oh, you guys can't see that on camera. I'm running a bead of hot glue around the top rim. Now I'm going to look directly down at it, and because I traced out the shape of the largest part of the can, I should be able to line this up really easily. Excellent. That was super easy to do. And there you go. That's all it is. Super easy. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Good. Just like that. All lined up at the outside. Cool. And there's our two buildings. Pretty cool, right? Now I'm going to take my little train template here. And I'm going to glue these bastards on the same way I did the other ones. Just put a nice little bead of hot glue right around the rim. Alright, and that's a good start, at least I think. Actually got a pretty good building going there. So, a couple more things I want to think about before I go any real further on this piece is of course I kind of want there to be like I say a bridge between the two but I also want to add some further details to this other than just the you know straight metal so I've actually decided beforehand that I want to run some pipes between these buildings very similar to how I did with the uh, cardboard can buildings I've got here push that aside for now I've got here some random different widths of plastic card tubing. You don't have to use this plastic card, it's a little more expensive than most other materials. And I know we're trying to do this on the cheap, but uh, this is what I got. And so, so I'm going to take my ruler. Where's my ruler at? Here it is. Got my imperial and metric. And I'm going to take a little measurement of the inside, sort of looking straight at the piece. I'm guessing it's about an inch and a half on the inside so I've got here my sharpie because pretty much nothing else writes on plastic card and I think I want to use the medium-sized tube and the sort of uh, maybe we'll use all three of these sizes take the little ones out and then I want to mark an inch and a half into each one of these actually going to take a larger exacto knife because this stuff is relatively easy to cut but it's not like super easy to cut and I have broken these little tiny blades on it before so I'm actually going to use my larger one because it gives me a little more push and it's less likely to break because it's so big and I'm just going to bird's eye it again come straight down on my mark as close to a 90 degree angle as I can and if you put the blade out too far, you're actually not going to be able to cut anything because you'll get too much flex. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Yes. There we go. There's my first one. And I'm going to go ahead and cut all the rest of these. The chains that brought me here To the wall I hit my friend And we will surely Meet again. Uh... Damn, that one was tough. All right, but luckily it was the last one. So I've got my six pipes. Let's just flatten all the edges, make sure I'm square as much as possible. And the easiest way to tell that is just again to look d directly down the edge. And if you see pieces sticking up, then that means you ain't level, you ain't square. Believe in fate, all soulmates. Cause I now that I've got my pipes cut, I'm looking here, and in fact, I've cut them just a little too short. This one actually seems to be a little bit longer. Let's see what I'm dealing with here. Cool. All right. So we're actually looking pretty good. 
And then in order to attach these pipes to our cans, I'm actually just going to hot glue them on the same way I hot glued everything else. And that's just simply a matter of covering one end in hot glue, covering the other end in hot glue, and just sticking them together. Now I like to look directly at it to see if it's somewhat level with my the base of my template. So if you're seeing here, I'm looking directly at it and I want to make sure it's kind of level. If it's a little bit off, it's a little bit off. So what, right? Especially when you have a bunch of them, uh, people won't really notice that that much. But you do want to make it as good as possible because remember, this was actually, if it was a real building, it would be built by professionals. And we are going to be adding a whole bunch of them. Now that we've cut a whole bunch of them, so of course you're not going to notice so much if it's a fraction off here and there. And I'm just going to go up and down the two buildings and attach as many pipes as I kind of feel is appropriate and what looks good. Soon. After I've put the pipes on, I'm just going to I'm just going around and like squeezing glue onto the edges sort of caulking them in a way and then uh, basically to fill the gaps but also to create some strength but you want to make sure that after after you put your glue on that you take the tip of the glue gun and just run it around the outside and that way once it's painted it'll kind of look like a weld joint or something like that uh, whereas right now it looks like a glob of glue I understand but that way there's no gaps in the piece uh, between the pipe and the cans because of course I did measure them rough so I got a, I had a little bit of a gap there but that's okay because I can fill it with the hot glue and the hot glue pretty much dries well as hard as plastic I mean it's as hard as like an eraser or a pencil eraser or something like that right it's more or less rubber so it'll hold together quite well and then because it has a rubbery type consistency it'll actually give me a little bit of bounciness back and forth Believe it or not, preventing this terrain piece from breaking as easily in the future. You would think uh, you'd want less movement for breakage, but no, you actually want it to bend a little bit rather than break, right? Like the willow tree. Branches, branches bend yet never break. some pipes going between the two buildings that looks pretty sweet if you ask me so I think I what I actually want to do is I want to create sort of a railing around the outsides of these the tops of these cans here and I think the best way to do that now that I'm actually thinking about it is with uh, toothpicks believe it or not so this is the guy I like to use for scale on all my terrain pieces Jim Bob Space Marine and uh, basically by just, you know, sort of holding the toothpick up, it's actually really tall. So my toothpick altogether is two and a half, just over two and a half inches. And my space marine, of course, is just over an inch. So if I cut it down to, wow, even if I cut it in half, it would be too much. Let me take a look at this guy again. Yeah. So he's, with, with his base, he's about an inch and a half. So if I cut this down to an inch and a quarter, it'll just be taller than him. So I want to just take a whole bunch of these toothpicks and decide that, looking at the length of them, if I want to make banisters after, maybe we'll do five per piece. Yeah, five sounds good. So there's five. Sticks, and since I'm going to cut them in half, I only need five because that'll create ten. There we go. Got all my marks. And believe it or not, your simple hobby clippers will cut toothpicks no problem. We'll see all the sides just like that show you like on. HBO, if we're leaving tonight. So now that I've got that figured out, I actually want to see how deep in these spikes go. And actually, 
If I push it through so that it's not poking out the bottom of the train piece, I should actually be okay as far as height. In fact, I'm going to hold that on, see what my Space Marine looks like. Yeah, actually, that's wicked cool. Yeah, I think that'll be good. All right. So now, what I actually want to do is I want to sort of judge, again, from a bird's eye view, I want to sort of judge where I want to put these. The best thing to do would actually be to take a protractor and measure out where my five points, equal points will be, but uh, in this case I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to run a bridge afterwards. So I'm going to want to run a bridge down on an angle from one piece to another. Um, so I want to leave that side open. So I'm going to actually take a look at it like this. and I'm looking at it straight on between the two cans and I'm just going to try and poke this guy in just sort of beside where the other can starts. And same thing on this side. Perfect. And the same thing up here, as parallel with that as possible. Cool. And the same thing here. Sweet. Now I want these to stand as straight as I can get them to stand. Again, if things are a little bit off, it's okay, because again, it is a battlefield, so that is what it is. The next step is going to be finding three other points that are relatively equal to one another from, like, judging by the distance between... Here, I'll do that. So looking at this dead on, I'm going to want to judge where I want the other three points. So I've got my two there, and I can sort of see how far apart they are. So I want to sort of do the same sort of distance between the other ones as there is between those. But again, I'm not measuring it, I'm kind of eyeballing it. If you're not good at eyeballing it, you can actually measure it and try and figure it out. But I'm the kind of guy who if it's like a fraction of a millimeter off, I don't worry about it. So right now, I'm just going to go around, look at it from above. The way I'm showing you guys on the camera right now, obviously from my point of view, it's going to be above. You guys are going to be staring at the side of it while I work. But uh, I'm just going to go around and find where I want to put the other ones. Looking for today They're killing the muse And they're killing the muse Alright. And it's just as easy as that. So, now that I've got my five here on each one, I'm going to want to run a railing between each one. But before I do that, I actually want to make sure that these stay where they are. So right now, they're just pressure fitted into the uh, foam core. And so they're just going to kind of fall out when I try and do stuff. Obviously, I'm going to be adding glue and stuff to, to this in the future. But right now, I'm actually going to take my crazy glue because um, crazy glue works really well at holding pretty much anything to anything. But also you'll find with the toothpicks, it actually soaks into the wood really good, uh, ensuring that they are, it is pouring down into the hole, even though the hole is filled with a toothpick, and uh, is getting stuck to the foam inside, not just the paper on top. And all I'm going to do there is just literally like take it and put a big glob on the base, and let it just kind of soak in. Same thing over here. And you see how I let it sort of, I'm gonna let it sort of bulge out of the tip of this thing a bit and then just hit the stick so that it, so it pours down the stick and sticks onto the cardboard and soaks right in. And obviously I can put a couple of, of dabs all the way around. <laughs> again because I want to make sure that there's lots on the base of these and that they're not going to move around too much. Obviously by adding our railings between them we're going to strengthen it quite a bit but for right now I just kind of want to make sure there's a nice dab on there and that's going to kind of cement everything together. right? While that dries, while that hardens I should say, 
I am going to go ahead and add some details to the base of this. So our cardboard can pieces, what we actually did was I took those pieces off those circuit boards, right? Those old circuit boards that we had. Um, and that was a cool effect, but I don't want to do the same thing on this because this is a different animal. Um, although it is kind of going to the same table and stuff like that. I think on this one, what I actually want to do is I want to make it more of a, like a refinery type thing. And so I'm going to put like large rocks around the base of the terrain piece. And again, we're trying to keep this as cheap and as inexpensive and as easy as possible. So what I'm actually going to do for that is I'm going to use, whoa, is I'm going to use just your standard white styrofoam, that really annoying squeaky stuff that everybody hates. I actually find it is great for building mounds uh, underneath the various layers of spackle and sand that we're going to add onto these after. And all that requires is really just breaking a bunch of pieces in random sizes off this stuff. I'm sorry if you can't hear me too well while I do this because it is really squeaky, but that is what it is. And I'm just breaking random pieces, and all this is going to do is give me a nice uneven ground uh, to make my terrain piece just a little more interesting. And just with those couple of little pieces, I probably won't even use all of it, just with those couple of little pieces, uh, I actually got quite a bit out of it. So it looks like I need a new glue stick and my glue gun here. And uh, I do have it on the low temperature. Now this glue gun has a high and a low temperature. Um, I find on the high it melts the styrofoam very quickly, but luckily the low temperature will melt it a bit, but not too much. So I'll just, uh, I'm going to put a bunch around the uh, sort of rim of this terrain piece, because that's not really a large enough area to put models and stuff anyway. And I'm just going to pick a couple pieces and just kind of stick them in place. Working quickly, because like I say, white glue dries very quickly. But also, I'm not being too careful about it. I'm just kind of sticking them wherever I think they might look cool. A brown hole. All right. Here. Those are actually in really well. You can see here I'm just fiddling them a little bit and I can pull them and it actually lifts the terrain piece. That means I'm laughing. And all that requires is lining it up. Oh, again I'm blocking with my hand. All that requires is lining it up with the two sticks. Marking out. Uh, I'm going to do that. Marking out. Boom. Boom. That's how that's my distance between my two thingies. And then I'm actually going to take wire cutters because my hobby clippers are not strong enough to be able to get through. So these clippers will actually give me the strength to be able to get through it. Just like that. And just like that. Excellent. And then before I glue it on, I just want to make sure, like we've done in past videos, that I take my knife and just weather it up a bit, so that'll just require taking, whittling some edges off, so it's not like such a clean edge on these popsicle sticks, and also flattening off this part here, where the clippers sort of pinched, just like that, flattening off with my knife, not rocket surgery, and so I've luckily still got my hot glue gun heated up here, and all I'm going to do is put a dab of hot glue on the end of one stick or the one end of the stick, and then the other end of the stick, and then I'm just going to stick it to both these toothpicks. Nice railing around the outside. Jim Bob can see over it just fine. And we good. So now I'm gonna do the top one. The taller building, I should say. First impression. Blew me away. 
Now second impression And I want you to stay Is that our platforms up top? We got a cool railing to go around them. You can fit a few Space Marines on each top. And so the next step I'm going to do is I want to add sort of a ramp from one side to the other. And I think the best way I'm going to do that is again with popsicle sticks. And I'm just going to use my marker. Actually, what I should do is trim one side. Oh, that one's broken again too. It's all these broken ones. All right, I'm going to trim the circular edge off one side. There we go. And then I'm just going to stick that where I want it. So that's where I kind of want the start of the ladder to be. And then where I want the top of the ladder to be, I'm just going to mark with my Sharpie. Sorry if you guys couldn't really see that. And chop it where I've marked. All right, so. And just like everything else, I want to kind of weather it a little bit. This is going to be sort of the... Uh, support running between the two that I'm going to be able to put to glue all of my slats to to be able to make it look like a model might actually be able to climb this thing. So I'm just going to cover this one edge in glue because that's the one that's going to stick down to the top platform and then this one I actually want to put the glue on the back of the stick rather than on the tip because the tip of this one is going to touch there and then whoops and then I want the back of this one to touch the top platform. And I want to look at it bird's eye again and try and sort of line it up as centered as possible. If it's a little bit off, it's a little bit off. But I want to make it as centered as possible. There we go. And of course the hot glue gun leaves strings everywhere, so just make sure you go around and pick them off as you're working. Cool. So now I have to decide how wide I want to make my steps on here. So in fact, I think popsicle sticks might look a little funny considering how wide they actually are. I, I mean, if I put a bunch of those on there, it might look kind of like a tree house, <laughs> more than an actual ladder. So I'm going to go back to my toothpicks. And what I'm actually going to do with those is just decide how wide I think I should make them. Now, a, a Space Marine's base is 32 millimeters. A Guardsman base is 25 millimeters. A Popsicle stick is a centimeter wide. I think I actually want to go with 32. So I'm just going to lay this down. Oh, I'll start by chopping off one end. And I'll mark out my 32. One, two, three, and two millimeters. Cool. Chop that again with my hobby clippers. And I'm going to take that one now and line it up with all the rest of my toothpicks until I've got maybe about five or six enough to populate that ladder. got my five or six toothpicks. I'm going to take a good look at this thing and see how long it actually is. So I'm looking at about eight centimeters, which is perfect because that means if I put a mark every centimeter, obviously the end and the end are not going to be included. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I guess I should have cut seven. That's cool. So what I will do is I will cut a seventh toothpick. There you go, we got seven steps. And all I'm going to do for that is just literally take a little dab of hot glue. Here, I'm actually going to start at the bottom and work my way up. Just put a dab right on my pencil mark and then stick my toothpick as centered as possible on there. Try and keep it as level as possible. And then just with my clippers or with something skinny like a knife blade or something like that, I'm just going to smooth off the hot glue. 
Boom. Awesome. So I'm gonna just keep going up. Drag a man down. I'm the black twin. Your stars. There we go. That's our sweet ladder from one spot or from one building to the other. I'll just put that a little closer so you guys can actually see it on the camera. Excellent. And so with this bin of bits, I think I'm just going to add a couple more details, just especially to the outside of the cans to make them look less like pop cans. We want them to look more like they're actually some kind of building. I'm just going to look through here and anything like that sort of piece which is perfect for the outside of this. Again, I've still got my hot glue gun heated up and I'm just going to basically hot glue these on. It's just as simple as that. So I like this piece here. I think that's going to look awesome on this terrain piece. And just fill what areas would actually touch with hot glue. And then I'll just stick it right there, let's say. I think I've actually got enough bits on my terrain piece. It's looking mighty sweet. So what I'm actually going to do next is I'm going to take my spackle and I'm going to just cover the ground, cover the uh, white styrofoam so that none of it's exposed. And uh, I just want this to look less flat. I want to make sure I spackle up into the crevices. Actually, just let me show you. So, just got here your normal spackle that you buy at your hardware store. Uh, a lot of the times I use the pink stuff that dries white, just because I like the to know when it's dry, but in this case I got this stuff for a good deal. It's just your standard white uh, spackle. And like I was saying, what I basically want to do is make sure I get it onto the base, especially of the building, and fill that sort of weird... Um, crevice, I guess is the right word for it, that weird crevice at the bottom of the can, because I don't want this to look like a can when it's done, of course. And that'll just also taper it out into the into the base of the terrain piece, and blend my rocks into the building as well. So I want to cover my foam rocks in this stuff too, make sure that I blend it into the base of the piece, cover up any of my hot glue globs because they're not going to look nice once this is done. And I'm just using my finger here guys, getting messy, don't be afraid to get messy. I'm just going to go around, fill all these cracks, get this tapered up into the building itself and then uh, that's going to basically be that. That's pretty much the build. I mean, this thing is, I guess, as far as I can take it today. Um, obviously, the next step, I'm going to be adding sand. I'm going to start to paint it. So uh, I got to wait quite a while for this to, to dry, though. Right. I take one to cool down and one to wake up. One for the madness, but one is not enough. There's something up ahead, maybe an exit out of this place. Well, let the missiles misfire, mutate, it's so meaningless. Laugh at the debris of our stupid lives. One, two, three, four.
wanted to give you guys a final shot of the terrain piece now that everything's dried and cured and what have you. It's looking pretty sweet if you ask me. Let's show you the other side. Check out the vines that we did. Again, we've done these in past tutorials. You can go back and check out the quick and easy uh, 40k buildings in our hobby tutorials playlist as well I have done other pieces in this trash to treasure terrain series with these vines as well we're trying to tie these all together guys so there it is I think this will make a sweet piece for our battle reports so I hope you all enjoyed these cool little towers that we made to match our uh, cardboard can pieces that we made uh, these ones obviously are actually made out of real pop cans whereas the other ones were cardboard cans and I wanted to apply sort of the same theories uh, to kind of make them blend in with each other, of course, all of these trash to treasure terrain pieces as well as our quick and easy pieces that I've done on the channel are all going to be put together to make a table for our battle reports, so that's exciting. Um, and we're going to be doing a whole lot more trash to treasure terrain pieces in the future, so if you like these tutorials, please hit the subscribe button as well, hit that little bell notification so that you know whenever these videos come out. On top of that, we do have a Patreon campaign, guys, and it is really the only way we, you know, recoup any of our expenses on this thing. So if you really like what we do and you want to help us out a little bit, go to the description below, check out our Patreon campaign. Not only does it help us, but it helps you a lot too, because it gets you all kinds of extra content. It gets you these videos, our normal bi-weekly videos, or twice a week videos, um, early as well. It will give you 10% off thewarpainter.com a great Canadian supplier of paints, brushes, especially all the uh, sort of more obscure brands that you can't really find in a lot of hobby stores like Scale 75 and Broken Toad and stuff like that. So check them out. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you 
at our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home.